In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I love to stare out over the blue water in Centerport. I love to walk by the beach, by the sand, and often I am looking up for birds in the air. When I walk past Queen of Martyrs Church, often I look for the cameramen who are pointing their cameras up in the trees, and they help me to spot where the bald eagles are. Often on the lawn at Queen of Martyrs, I see geese, and this time of year, they are flying. So I love to watch and see what direction they're heading. Often, if you watch geese, they will start out in one direction, and then they'll figure out that's not really where they're going, and then they'll start circling a little bit, and eventually they'll figure it out, and they'll head in a southerly direction or wherever it is that they are going. As the summer changes to fall, they are often on the move. In today's gospel, Jesus is changing the direction. Now, Jesus has been in Capernaum, and Jesus has mentioned on several occasions that he is going to be arrested. He will be tortured and killed, and on the third day, he will rise. And today's gospel is about getting salted with fire and then finding peace with one another. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Now people ask, well, what, it, what does salt mean? And over the years, Sometimes the people that are rewriting or redacting the lessons change it a little bit. This is true this week. There are two verses, 46 and 48, that the redactors put other things in because Jesus really doesn't explain what salt means. And the point of what they were saying was salt was used to show the covenant to show that behind everything else, we actually were in a particular direction. That direction is following God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And salt represented the fact that that was the basis of our faith. So Jesus is telling the disciples that they need to refocus and to turn in a new direction. After hearing that Jesus was going to the cross, what did they say last week? They were arguing about who was the greatest among them. So today's words seem a little harsh, but all of us at times have a little fire, a little bit of time where we thought things were going to go great, and all of a sudden they're not. And we wonder, am I going to be okay? Is this going to be okay? What's going to happen? Are we headed in the right direction? I can tell you for a fact that the world is not at peace at this particular moment in time. We need to be salted with fire so that we are not at war with ourselves in this country and that we don't expand some of the conflicts in the world to a larger war between many nations. In the reading today, James has the best answer of all. He simply asks us to pray. Please pray for peace with me. Be salted with the words of Jesus and live in peace with one another. Jesus says that each of us will be salted with fire. So salt is the promise to keep God's covenant of radical love and discipleship. He has asked his disciples to deny themselves and to follow him but they don't understand what direction he's going in. For some reason, they think he's going to raise up armies and he's going to overthrow the powers that are oppressing them at the time. They don't seem to get it. We are asked to be a living sacrifice to the way of love. And fire helps us to refine ourselves in our lives. I wonder if you can think of a time when you were in a refining fire. I know I can think of several. This week I was at the cathedral 
and eight priests were asked to say if their church was viable and if their church was vital. So is your church headed in the right direction? And do you have the resource to continue in that direction? Seven of the eight said no and no. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I was aghast. I was like, what? You're not viable? You're not vital? I said that we were both vital and viable, that we were, that, you know, we were struggling, we were under fire like everybody else, but at least we're, I think we're, we're trying to head in the right direction. We're doing our best to head in the right direction. Brothers and sisters, the Episcopal Church and all Christian churches are in a refining fire. What we are fighting um, most are things like secularism, and it leads to values that lead to a decline in religious affiliation and church attendance. In other words, the church used to be important to people. It used to be important to go to church, and it was the norm to go to church. And if people didn't go to church, there was kind of a, kind of a pull, kind of a magnetic pull to come to church because that's what everybody was doing. Sunday morning, which was once sacred, is now one of the biggest time for children and youth sports, for example. It is no longer a sacred time when most of the people come to church. We are also fighting technology. One of the great lessons we learned during COVID was that we could put by our cameras and our microphones service to people who didn't have to leave their houses. And a lot of people now are just picking and choosing on the internet whatever service they want. And they don't sit through a whole service. They don't go and get involved in a community. And they do no apostolic action whatsoever. But they kind of just, you know, hear a little bit. They get a little taste of church. Now, I must admit, when I'm on vacation, sometimes I do it myself. I just tune into the Zoom and I watch it. And it's a great thing that we have. But I wonder if it's working for us or against us sometimes. The other piece that I think is even worse than that with technology is that misinformation is so prevalent in our world, it's hard to believe what you hear. I'm on the radio. Somebody says something. I think to myself, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's true. I change the station to another station, and they say something completely opposed to it. And now I wonder, which one is true? I've, I really have no idea. There's so much misinformation out there. We also live in a time of increasing cultural pluralism. Everyone can choose from a variety of morals and beliefs to the point that almost anything goes in our culture. There used to be just some simple rules like, I know when I was growing up, my dad was like, be honest. Just, just be honest. There's nothing more important than giving your word and keeping your word. There's nothing more important than uh, telling the truth whenever you can. Um, today, um, it seems like people are just trying to get by. They're trying to do whatever they can to get whatever they can. And they're, th some of the morals that we used to take for granted, they're, they're just like on a checklist. Ah, nope, 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 nope. They, people don't seem to even think like having common courtesy at a traffic light um, when the light turns green, giving people maybe two seconds to get going before you start beeping at them. We also live in a time of extreme political polarization. You all know this. People get their facts from their own biased political resources, which cause us to live in two different understandings of the news. And when we all come together in this church, where we have a variety, a diverse congregation from people of all sorts of uh, backgrounds and all sorts of uh, political affiliations, sometimes uh, they're listening to which way we're pointed and they want everyone to point in their direction. And it's causing churches to also be politically polarized. Youth engagement has decreased substantially because a lot of young people, young adults especially, aren't finding the authenticity that they look for. They're not finding the social justice they look for and they're not finding the ministries that they want to do. I've told you many times that what young a lot of young people just want to do is they just want to help people. It's a very simple thing. They just want to go out with their time and help other people. They have the energy. They have the ability. But less and less churches are doing it. 
all those seven churches that I was talking about, none of them were really doing any ministry. All they were trying to do is just trying to keep the lights on, trying to keep enough people to get, you know, uh, stuff for the altar, trying to get somebody in the back of the church, so just, just trying to keep going. Um, and that's what's happening at a lot of churches, and not just our churches. Um, a lot of the churches in town here don't even have pastors any longer. Jesus says that salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. There was a time when the church was flourishing and we were the magnetic church. We all have these remember when stories. And I remember, I remember really well at St. Peter's when I was coming out. There were 600 people in church. And when we went out, the bells would ring and we'd all go out and we'd bring sandwiches and we'd tell people about church and we'd try to get people in school to come to our church. And we were proud that we went to that church. Now, there's only one service, and there's uh, less than 30 people uh, there. There's, there's nobody going to that church anymore. Uh, whoa, you know, it, it's changed. A lot of things have changed. So now we live in an apostolic church, and what that means is the Holy Spirit sends us out. We can't just sit here and wait for other people to come in. And uh, the key thing that I learned um, was to change my perspective, that what young people want is not necessarily to come to church on Sunday morning, but what they want to do is be involved in our ministry. They want to uh, grow food, for example, for the poor. They want to work in a thrift shop or come to our thrift shop or give clothes to our thrift shop. Uh, they want to serve the homeless through places like Hi Hi. They want to do some of the things that we're doing. They want to stand up against hate like we do in Hannah. Um, so we need to point a little bit more of our marketing towards having people come to our fair right now. I think the fair is essential for us. The jazz concerts are essential for us. The ministry we do is essential for us because we are now the apostolic church. We are sent out there to do good in our community. And when we do, people will join us in it. Eventually, they'll become part of our community. They'll get to know us. And who doesn't want to have Dave's pancakes and bacon um, <laughs> after a nice church service? They're going to join us. But we can no longer keep everything the way it was in the golden age of the magnetic church. And I know this is difficult, people. Um, I told the 8 o'clockers, and I mentioned this at our meeting. I said, everybody said, oh, 8 o'clock. No, we don't like the language. We don't do that anymore. And I said, um, oh, I told everybody when I got here, I will not change the 8 o'clock service until Jesus comes himself and tells me that we are no longer doing it. And you know what the funny thing is? The 8 o'clock service has the same amount of people it did when I came here 10 years ago. There were 24 people today. There was 25 last week, 22 weeks. The same amount of people and the same people come to the 8 o'clock service. They love the 8 o'clock service. So that change is not necessarily moving in the right direction. But our vestry understands that we need to change to some degree. And they're discerning new ways to reach out into the community with love and compassion. And we're testing out a little bit of new music. I'll guarantee you that everybody doesn't love contemporary music. But some people do. So we're going to test it out. The, the last Sunday of every month, we're going to do some um, contemporary music. You're even going to hear something on the radio today that we, uh, that we will sing. You might even recognize it. So I ask you, if you are a church hymn person, um, that you just you know, understand we need, to, we need to reach out. We need to do things slightly differently. And so help us as we, as we try this one Sunday a month. Now, I need all of you to open your minds and to allow the Holy Spirit to act in new ways at St. John's. We cannot just continue in the same path we've been. I see what happened in those other seven churches. They just got smaller and smaller and smaller until they didn't have the resources to even pay for a pastor anymore. Or they didn't have the resources to have an altar guild or to have somebody uh, make coffee in the morning. And little by little, they just started to decrease. And honestly, that's been going on since the 60s in our church. And so Jesus gives us harsh words today that says, we're, we got to change. We got to move. We got we to go in a different direction. And thank goodness for all the people in our vestry who have been working so hard looking for new ways and new directions to be the apostolic church out there in our community. Jesus directed his followers, as you, as you have sent me out into the world, 
so I have sent them. The them is you, every one of us. Jesus sends us out into the world. In Jeremiah, we hear these words. Let the Lord your God show us where we should go and what we should do. James also says, listen, if you're discerning, pray about it. Just pray about it. Eve, even when you're eating the food and you don't have the nice vegetables and the meat you had, understand that God will come through for you. Again and again, when we're under fire in our lives, all of a sudden we realize, wow, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I'm going to get through this. And that is, that is a peace. It is an understanding that I'm going to make it through all the difficult times because God is in control. So I pray to God to show us the direction that we need to go in. If we live by the truth and in love, we shall grow completely into Christ, who is the head by whom the whole body is fitted and joined together. The key in today's gospel is that we are to commit ourselves in Christ and the Holy Spirit will lead us into a peace that passes all understanding. Like the disciples, it may not lead us to where the church was. It may lead us in a new direction, even better, and to the will of God. The peace of God is a deep sense that we are on the right path. Things that seemed random begin to converge in the same direction. The same message is repeated again and again in new ways over a long period of time. And the presence of a fruitful ministry is always a sign that we are on the path to peace. I, and I bring up things like our thrift shop. You know, when I got here, I think we were doing $5,000 or $6,000. Every year, more and more. Every year, more people are giving. Every year, it's expanded. Uh, we always hear nice things about it, um, and we need more people for it. Um, and here comes the fair again. It'll be a chance to show it off in the community. More people we, will be exposed to it, and it just gets bigger and bigger. Same way with our fair. Our fair is the one premier thing that we do where we give a lot of money to local uh, ministries. And believe me, they all know that we give money. EMLI is coming up on a dinner. Believe, they know we're one of their big benefactors. We, we give to EMLI through our ECW. So we're just asking that you all be apostles, that you be sent out there and that you bring people back here to that fair, uh, that we might help and serve the people in our community. For 280 years, this church has had enough salt that we feel the peace that passes all understanding. And even though we've had churches that have burnt down, even though we've had um, devastating loss, even though we've had to move the church when the town moved, even though we've had all sorts of things that we've had to go through, um, we are still one of the strongest churches in Suffolk County. We are in a list of about three that are both viable, um, and vital to their community. And, and when you talk to people around this community, people know we, we do good ministry here and we need to continue to do those things. We need everyone in this congregation to be salted with the love of God, to know the living God through prayer and ministry, to listen to new ways of bringing others to Christ and to be at peace with one another. Amen. <laughs>